So we're going to do a couple of examples on how to identify if a function is growth, if it's decay, and where the asymptote is on all of these functions. Um, so what I want you to do before we write down any examples is take a second, pause the video, and copy this grid down on your notebook paper. So the examples that we're going to do is y equals 5 raised to the x y equals 1 eighth raised to the x, y equals 8, 0 0.25 raised to the x, y equals negative 7 raised to the x, plus 3, y equals 4 times 2.5 to the x minus 1, y equals 3 times 5 over 4 raised to the x plus 9. Okay, I'm going to do examples 1 and 3 with you, and then I'm going to let you pause the video and try a couple of examples on your own. So, for the first example, it's saying, it's asking you, what is A, what is B, is it growth or decay, and where is the asymptote? So remember, A and B are two separate numbers, but if I look here, I only have one number. So the question is, does that number represent A, or does that number represent B? You can have a B value, sorry, you can have an A value that is not something that you cannot see, but you cannot have a b value that you cannot see because in order to have this x being raised to a power, I need to have a base. And that tells me that 5 must represent my b value. Now, that question then is, what is my a value? What is a number that I can write in this space right here without changing the meaning? So I want you to think, you're probably stuck between two numbers. Is that number 0 or is that number 1? I mean, take a second and think about that. That number has to be a 1, because 1 times anything does not change that number. So the question now is, is this growth or is this decay? And remember, growth and decay is based off of the B value. So since my B value is 5, this has to be a growth function, because B is greater than 1. And I want you to get into the habit of thinking, okay, what is the reason for that? I'm just now realizing that this yellow is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to go and change the color. Now, to figure out the asymptote, remember the asymptote is the vertical shift, which is the k value. And k is the thing that's added or subtracted onto the end. And if I look over here, there is no plus sign, there is no minus sign, there's nothing added, and there's nothing subtracted, which tells me that my asymptote is at the location y equals 0, y equals 0. Okay, now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the rest of them. And you might be able to and you might not be able to, but if you need one more example, let's do example number 3. y is equal to 8 times 0 0.25 raised to the x. So, a, B raised to the X. This one's pretty straightforward. My A value has to be 8. My B value has to be 0 0.25. Now the question is, does that represent growth or does that represent decay? One more time, growth and decay is based off of the B value, and that B value is between 0 and 1, and so I can say that this is decay because B is between 0 and 1. The asymptote again is actually going to be Y equals 0 because there's nothing added on or subtracted off from the end. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and see if you can do the rest of them on your own. Okay, hopefully by now you have went ahead and tried, attempted all of the other ones. So I'm going to kind of quickly go through them. Number two is similar to number one in the sense that there's only one value written, okay? And that tells me that 
my A value must be 1. My B value is an eighth, which makes this a decay function, because 1 eighth is between 0 and 1. And again, my asymptote is at y equals 0. I'm going to pause on the fourth one. I'm going to come down to the fifth one. My A value is 4. My B value is 2.5. This has to be a growth function because my B value is greater than 1. 2.5 is greater than 1. And my asymptote this time is y equals negative 1. Because if I graph that function, it's going to be shifted down one unit, which makes it have an asymptote at negative 1. Now, if you went and looked at the graph of that function, you might think, well, no, it's definitely equal to negative 1. Like, I can see the graph at negative 1. Well, that's just because it is so close to it, your calculator can't do anything other than make it look like it's graphing on there. But if you go look at the table, you'll notice that that y value will get closer and closer and closer to negative 1, but it will never be exactly equal to negative 1. For the last one, my a value is 3. My b value is 5 over 4. And this is the one where I feel like a couple of y'all will have made some mistakes because you see a fraction and you're like, duh, a fraction means decay. But this one is actually growth because 5 over 4 is not a proper fraction. 5 over 4 is actually 1.25. And 1.25 is greater than 1. My asymptote then will be y equals 9. Now the reason that I paused on this one right here is because I had a feeling that a lot of you guys were going to write negative 7 here, and that is wrong. Your B value is not negative 7 because if you guys remember up at the top, your B value can never be negative. Your B value is actually positive 7 and your A value is negative 1. So I want you to take a second and think, do you understand why that is the case? Okay. And so then this is actually a growth function where b is greater than 1. And my asymptote then is at y equals 3. And those are our examples on how to identify whether something is growth or decay and where its asymptote is. Our next lesson, we're going to learn how to use these characteristics to actually model things in real life. So we're going to be writing equations of exponential growth, exponential decay, and actually interest.